We're here in the Panhandle of Florida to capture leatherback sea turtles and apply satellite tags to them. We generally search an arc from Pensacola, Florida to Panama City, Florida. The principal threat to leatherbacks globally is bycatch and commercial fisheries. We wanted to understand their habitat use and distribution in different seasons and in different locations to try to understand how we could reduce that bycatch. Most of that bycatch in the pelagic longline fishery occurs in the late spring, early summertime. We're trying to learn, are they spending more of their time in the middle of the water column, down towards the bottom? Leatherbacks are unique because they have a diet of jellyfish. So their distribution in the water column is reflective of where the jellyfish are in the water column. So better understanding how they're utilizing the water column will potentially suggest some mitigation measures we could use. Catching leatherbacks is really a team effort. We require a spotter plane to help us locate them. After we find a leatherback sea turtle, we approach the animal, the net is put in front of it, then the boat reverses to help move the leatherback into the net. The net's designed to break away and essentially bag the leatherback within the net. And then we pull the leatherback onto that craft for evaluation and tagging. It takes four of us to do that because these animals can be upward to 1,000 pounds. A veterinarian with us will assess the overall health condition of the animal. We take important information such as the length of the turtle shell. We are looking for any distinctive injuries, taking photographs of the animal. We affix the satellite tag to the turtle. If it doesn't have flipper tags or a pit tag, we also apply those. And then we carefully put the turtle back in the water. The leatherbacks then are free swimming and gathering data via the satellite tag. And what that satellite tag is providing us with is GPS location. It's providing us temperature data and it's providing us dive data. So we understand the temperatures that animal is in, the depths which that animal is in. And it tells us where leatherbacks are distributed in the Gulf seasonally, how they're using the water column, and it also tells us the amount of time they spend at the surface. Leatherback sea turtles globally have declined about 40% in the last three generations, so we're really concerned about their survival and recovery. By studying where leatherbacks occur in the Gulf of Mexico and then how they use those habitats, we can better understand threats posed by different human activities, whether they be commercial fishing or things like oil and gas exploration. We can foresee how those things might negatively impact sea turtles and hopefully identify ways to prevent or minimize those risks. If we have a healthy ocean, we're going to have healthy sea turtles. Healthy sea turtles are a reflection of a healthy environment. Sea turtles have been around for millions of years. We hope that they'll be around for millions more as good stewards of the planet. It's upon us to make sure that they continue to persist so that future generations of people can enjoy them.